from the astrological or our ancestors, everybody moving this boat forward uh, and for making this uh, beautiful morning as I profoundly was aligning my soul, my heart, my spirit with which each or one of you, with your amazing path, how is that we have come across into this uh, sacred space right now and uh, how touching and how moving is when we are just that humans brothers and sisters all of us we all are humans we all are these beings these persons trying to figure it out life trying to look back in our life how possibly how touch and how heartful or painful it has been or challenging it has been for our with our kids or with our own self lost and confused and how only now we are giving meaning or trying to understand all of our when we were part of this so um, the systems that we all have been part of even being indigenous or being in our wonderful western society uh, yet taking the best of these worlds taking the best of these realities that we all have been exposed and not and accepting it fully as well it is only when in my own opinion as yesterday stressing enough of coming back to the heart of coming back to love of coming back to that oneness that we all come from and when we do open the space we allow ourselves and all of this magic happens within this amazing 12 13 beings that we are here and just envisioning that this could ripple to the wall to the wide world I mean, it is already rippling. It is already happening. And today, and I'm being as, as, as immaculate as possible in the words I'm expressing. Yesterday, I couldn't ask enough in my prayers to the universe, to Father Son, Mother Moon, Mother Earth, to come up with this new language, to come up to really start manifesting this kind and just world for all beings for all humanity despite your background despite wherever it is that we come from from wealthy poor whatever it is that we have put this distinguished and um, levels for all of us and to to join these forces to join in this unity to join in this love so we can bring from this amazing golden puddle uh, like it's our mother earth to bring back and now we start our healing in the profound ways possible that it, we didn't even know it was possible healing for ourselves whatever it is that we are in our path because we haven't seen it a lot feel it enough already with everything that is happening bringing forward that healing to us and to our little ones to our children to to our amazing future that we are going to be perhaps many of us blessed to still experience a glimpse of it before we join to back to our source and i'm beyond grateful i've been dreaming about this day i've been dreaming about these moments for the longest time even though many of my people or friends, they, they tell me like sometimes you do not you are not even like a 31 year old you you have, it seems like you have lived already so many lives that you're this old soul or or somewhere along the lines and when I hear each of you your stories it just touches so different parts of my soul that yes 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 all the yes as if I was you know living all of those experiences because in a way we have in a way we have shared, in a way that now that we are seeing before our very eyes how humanity we are waking up, regardless we want it or not, <laughs> it's here. And um, it's just so, so beautiful. I dream with, us kind, with that kind and just world, coherent world for all of us, regardless whatever is out there, regardless before and foremost putting before in the front row our humanness our heart the people it is possible see what's happening right now in our world we already are coming up with solutions that it's going to be well for us and for everybody else and we are going to do that a step at a time a step at a time as well so we are not all entangled all over again 
right? I remember from one of my uh, gurus, masters, mentors, uh, he was saying, we kind of come, we have, uh, we are, we are the, the spiders. We've been weaving, you know, all this, all this web of life. And now we have come across and somehow we turn it a fly. And now it's a fly trying to feel like, how did I, we, I walk this, but now what, how come I'm a fly? <laughs> Remembering that I'm, how do, how do I get to a spider so I can see what I've walked? What, what I have weave and how I can uh, slowly entangle and what is like, so we are just flies trying to go back to, to us as a spider to understand our own weaving, what we have been weaving. And we are in that process, we are in that dawn of, of the soul in these darkest moments of, of thing, not to ignore, not to repress, not to oppress any longer, because that too is our very side. As I've had tirelessly during these times, this conversation with my husband, Mark Cook, it's uh, sometimes we don't want to face that evil side of us that we all, since we share this love as well, all of us together, yet we don't want to recognize that that evil we see out there, that darkness, that shadows that we do see out there, that wrong, it's, it's in it's here. As humans, we too share that. And how is that all manifesting in my being, you know, all these autoimmune diseases for my case and trauma and all of it. And we cannot expect that now we know that somebody out here is going to fix it for us. You know, and somebody was saying yesterday, like, then we even consciously asked ourselves, are we deserve, are we deserving right now as we are? Do we deserve a just world right now? Do we deserve a kind world right now as we are? Or are we willing to take our life responsible ownership own our shadows, own our light, come into comprehension and coherence, both of them. Only then we are going to start manifesting this amazing reality that we all deserve. How can we deserve something without you doing the work? We have been doing that for the longest time now. Not like just wanting from the outside when we are not showing up doing the work at all. Right? And uh, thank you. <laughs> talking a lot here. I will pass please to Jonathan. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby. For me, um, the medicine wheel has been profound in my life. It's, um, I've learned the medicine wheel from many different interpretations. And recently, just before this event, it came to me again. And um, it's, it's constantly, I'm constantly thinking about it. And, and I think that's, for me, the message I want to uh, share with everyone is the understanding of the medicine wheel, which I described yesterday as um, we start from spirit. So before we're even born, we're, we're a part, we're, we're spirit, we're divine. We're this divine spirit. And our life is the journey of air, spirit, transforming into soil, into Mother Earth. So just as the sun rises from the east and falls in the west, that is our life. It, it, the one day that we experience is equivalent to our life. That we start from air, this divine spirit, and we move and transform into Mother Earth. Uh, into the body of Mother Earth. And during that journey, it is our experience of heart and mind, the duality of heart and mind. And ultimately in the center is conscious will. So when we come here, we, are, um, we start fresh. We, we, don't, we don't come with... Uh, all of our ancient knowledge through the journey of becoming mother earth we gain this ancient knowledge we recall the ancestral ancient knowledge and i think the purpose is for us to balance the duality of the mind and the heart 
And what I mean by that is um, in life, we're given many situations. In life, we're given many um, boxes, I'll call them. Um, and I had this conversation with my mom just before I got on this call. And, um, you know, for some reason, parents are um, giving their box to their children, you know, and, and saying, live in this box because it's safe in this box. And what I think about, um, you know, when I think about living in those box, I, I look at plants. And recently this weekend, I uh, seen four tomato plants, two of which were planted in pots and two of which were planted in the earth. The two that were in the plot, in the pots, they were uh, very thin. Uh, they weren't producing any tomatoes. They were small. The two that were planted in the earth were thick. They had thick stems. They were producing tomatoes. And it reminded me of the boxes that we put our children in. You know, and the box could be anything from, you know, religion to culture to language. You know, work in this box. Stay in the box because it's safe in the box. But in the box, we are limited. And I think that's the key for us is, uh, as many people talked about in the introduction, is how do we experience life? Th that's essentially what our purpose is. It's spirit experiencing life and becoming Mother Earth. We, we have to remove the boxes of, you know, um, that, that has been opposed on us. And I'll give you an example. My... Uh, father's side he's it comes from uh, they come from Portugal and um, they've lived in this box of you know being safe within the Portuguese community that they buy from the Portuguese community they communicate with the Portuguese community everything is within the Portuguese community and now during this time that we're in um, they're struggling because no longer is the box that they once lived in and lived within is doing them any good. And when they try to get out of the box, it's so uncomfortable and so uh, different for them that they just scurry back into their box. And I think for our young people, we can't give these limiting boxes to them anymore. We can't um, tell them that, you know, you are Portuguese or you are indigenous or you are Greek or you are Italian or you are Chinese or you, those, those are limiting boxes. What you are is divine spirit. What we all are is divine spirit. And we're going through this journey of becoming uh, a part of mother earth. And during this journey, it is our conscious will and it's our, our consciousness with, with a wiped memory, we then get the opportunity to respond to situations. It is our purpose in life is to learn how to respond to situations. And I talked about this in the webinar with the basketball, that the basketball, if it was constantly thrown at you uh, as a child and, and people you know, around you laughed at you when the ball hit you, growing up, you would uh, be afraid of the basketball. Subconsciously, you'd be afraid of it. I think our journey in life is to be able to master our emotions. And the reason why our purpose of doing this, of mastering our emotions, mastering our heart, the purpose of this is because on the other side, when we are, again, divine spirit, we are creators. Instantly with our emotions, we create. So imagine if you couldn't control your emotions and you allowed anger uh, to fill your, yourself and 
you know, you as a divine spirit would then create chaos instantly. So I think the purpose why we're here on this planet is to be able to master our emotions, that we do not allow external forces to influence us. And that's the journey that we're on is, is a journey of mastery that eventually we will get to a point where we master our emotions. Um, but it's, it's, it's a life journey, right? It's, it's not something that you can pick up day one and, and uh, you know, you're good. It's, it's a constant test, a constant obstacles you'll face, you know, constant, uh, you know, molding and shaping to ensure that when we do become divine spirits again, that we've become masters of our heart, masters of our emotions. And that's, and that's really the purpose of, a, of, of our life is we are all divine spirits. We're here to master our emotions. And we are going to become a part of Mother Earth and, and within her divinity. Um, and when we do become divine spirits again, um, th this, is, this is our test. This is our, this is our trial, you know. Um, it's often uh, I hear the word passion. Uh, passion is, is an Italian word that, that actually means to suffer. And in that suffering, can we still stay true to our true values, to our, to our true divinity? And I think that's, that's what our test is. That's what our, what our life purpose is. So that's what I want to recap. Uh, it's a little bit more in depth from the webinar, but uh, understanding the medicine wheel, using that framework and understanding that we are all divine spirits, even though our society puts us in boxes and tells us, you know, you should be this way because you grew up in, in, you know, from parents of this box, you know, whether it's Chinese, indigenous, Portuguese, Italian, Greek, whatever it is, that box uh, is no longer, um, it's no longer supporting us. We're now all connected. And I think we now all to, need to realize that the new generation, the children, that we can't put them in those boxes anymore. We got to let them grow to to fully experience, uh, you know, the diversity of life, the challenges of life, and as long as we anchor them in on the heart, then I think we're going to get there. It, it's it's inevitable. Thank you, Gabby and Jonathan, uh, for recapping some of the learnings and going deeper into some of them as well. Uh, I can attest and I think I can say on behalf of everyone, you're a lot wiser than your, you're wiser than beyond your years. Um, and we have a lot to learn from you uh, as our community grows. Um, now I want us, if, if it's possible for Gabby and Jonathan, maybe to each take a couple of minutes and, and very high level share with us Clearly, you're both very much visionaries, and, and you have been able to learn from your ancestors, and you see that the way that our core in society is, is, is ill, is broken. And, and we know that from our Mother Earth suffering, um, mental well-being, um, becoming a priority, and so on and so on. Could you share a couple of thoughts of what is your vision of the future? And I think this will be very, uh, it will be a great way for us to launch uh, our hands-on workshop once we hear from you. So why don't we start with the condor, Gabby, we'll go to your, and then we'll come back to the eagle with Jonathan. <laughs> <sighs> so I no longer it's no longer a dream now. It's 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 being, it's manifested, it's here, it's right now. With this as repetitive I may be sounding now after my share of a kind, 
and just equanimity world for all of us for our education systems to be to be focused in unleashing the truest potential the inner wisdom that see that we all possess we all human beings possess where opportunities no matter what your background where you come from opportunities are equal because we all are capable we have distorted our reality with all these boxes as beautifully our brother jonathan says we have created all these boxes and this information drunken in information for the benefit of who i think we know already we're starting to know clearly to the benefit of who for equality of opportunities for everybody we all have that same soul we all have have that same spirit the same heart and to have that equal opportunity to shine to our fullest potential all of us despite age gender as well the great opportunities that only the lucky few have been having now to be able to share the seeds that our ancestors not only in my case the incas but the atlantis and so back forward have planted the seeds in us for humanity to be a conscious uh, drive of the conscious natural evolution that we are taking to dare and be able to download what is so ready out here <laughs> from the spirit from the source to be this responsible caretakers of mother earth as sat guru if you have heard or follow or know about him this amazing mystic from india and even as enlightening to me it was it's we are a piece of mother earth we really literally are everything that comes like yeah, all of it we are a piece of mother earth we check out from this amazing experience and we give back this piece of mother earth we have borrowed for our experience here and in this current situation right now are we the happiest of giving this piece of mother earth that we have borrowed to give it back even personally myself in this intense work i'm doing recognizing my shadows recognizing with the life i have been living up until today right now if i were to give back maybe a bigger percentage but i'm not the proudest or the happiest right now to be giving back this this piece of mother earth that has i been lent but the work relies now it's in every breath we take it's in every action we take and now i'm the utmost highest commitment because i am not fooling only everybody around me i'm not fooling any longer that i thought i'm fooling the world i'm fooling myself i'm fooling the divine i'm fooling to my creator who has sent me here to use me as a tool to be all religions to that we attempt uh, Catholicism or everywhere around, we attempt to be that uh, mighty divine walking on earth. We kind of got a little lost, but again, here we are. So I dream, no, I create <laughs> this world for all of us, kind, just with the greatest opportunities, equally for everybody, for everyone, because we all are capable. We all are capable for bringing forward a mighty, mighty, amazing, marvelous tomorrow. Thank you. I think the, um, the future is, um, it, it's going to change rapidly and, and we have to adapt to it. And the best peoples to adapt to change are young people. And we just, as Karen said it, earlier in her introduction is we need to stop limiting young people we need to be supporting young people they are the ones that will be living in this future world and raising their children in this future world so let's support them let's support their creative thoughts 
as uh, this elder youth relationship that we find in a lot of indigenous communities, the youth are the ones that are filled with creative thought. They, they still can imagine and, you know, uh, adapt and be resilient uh, to many things. And I often think about um, during my morning runs, I, I usually run through a forest and I was running one time and there was, uh, I usually run around six in the morning, so it's, it's fairly early and I'm running and there was a, a young woman who was walking through the forest. And I thought to myself, you know, 500 years ago, you know, that young woman could be in significant danger. You know, a male coming, you know, that, that male 500 years ago could have, you know, grabbed that woman and, you know, done something horrific to her. But now we live in this society where, you know, we're running through that forest and, you know, just a gentle good morning, hello, and we continue on our way. And it's interesting because as humans, we're evolving, right? We're starting to realize um, the impact that we have. And so do the old systems work still in this new era? You know, we, we see a lot of defunding the police uh, campaigns that are happening right now. I think we need to radically change these systems. And it's our young people who... Uh, we need to come to and, and gain those creative thoughts from of how we can radically change the systems we have. Because I think as we evolve, we don't need, to, you know, our systems need to evolve. We don't need to have, um, you know, brutal use of force anymore. I don't believe we need that anymore. You know, I, I you know, it was once a time where, you know, we, we were mass wars and, and, and pillaging and, and, you know, raping and, you know, coming into communities and destroying and taking. That's, that's, that's not our current society anymore. And so now that we're moving forward into this future, what does the future look like? How do the people relate and interact with each other? Do we need to have the court system? Do we need to have the police system? You know, what, what could a world look like without those things? And I think it's our young people that will come up with those creative thoughts. And it's the elders who will support the young people. In our current generation, um, you know, the wealth is held right now in, in the baby boomers, uh, you know, the, the elderly population. They're holding on to significant wealth. That's our investors. We, those people need to invest into the youth, the young people. And uh, so this future world, we, we need to have more discussions on with young people of what this looks like. We need to get rid of the boxes that were imposed onto us. We need to stop imposing those boxes onto young people. Um, and I know that it's, it's happening. It's going to happen, right? The, this uh, June 22nd is the start of a new cycle, you know? It, and if we think about that, like this new cycle, what does this new cycle look like? Does this new cycle have, you know, jails? Does it have police? Does it have courts? Does it have, or is it restorative justice that we're using? Is it, uh, you know, circular tables? Uh, that we're using, mediators that we're using instead of crown attorneys, like just completely uh, ridding of all these boxes that were once used and once helpful. Now we're coming into this new era. Are, are those, we got to rethink the whole thing. And I think it's the young people who are going to live in these systems. They need to be a part of the discussion. And it's us, the the elder generation that you know, need to support them and, and how do we support them, right? And that's, um, I guess, you know, to help us with this conversation because we're going to break out into two groups. One is going to be about, you know, what is the business, what does business look like in this new era? And the second will be, what does education look like in this new era, right? And we got to really have our young people in mind when we're having these discussions 
and you know allow them to just have them in in your hearts and in your minds when we break out uh, what does this new era look like for them and how do we support them thank you jonathan uh, and gabby so as jonathan mentioned um the two systems that we're going to be reimagining today is our economic system and the second will be the education system. Uh, and this is just the beginning, of course, right? Like there's the justice system we have to think about, there's the food system we have to think about, but this is just, again, the beginning. And the reason I think it's evident why we chose the economic system and the education system. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is in the chat, I'm gonna share uh, the, the two uh, problem statements that we've put together. Uh, and then I will invite you to let us know which of the two you're interested in joining. So breakout room number one, the problem statement that you're going to be working is how might we create a new economic system based on a unification of indigenous and modern cultures. And this will be co-facilitated by Jonathan and myself. And then we have breakout room number two and the problem statement will is, how might we create a new education system based on unification of indigenous and modern cultures? And this will be co-facilitated by Gabby and Andrew. So if you could just take a moment and let us know. Uh, and then Andrew, will you be able to support me with the breakout rooms, please? Thank you. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll have about 20 minutes in the breakout rooms, and then we'll come back uh, and have a debrief before we wrap up and share next steps. So if you have decided, please go ahead. So uh, Andrew and I- Maybe if we have everybody type in the number, either one or two, yeah, thank you. Yeah, perfect. Um, and Christine, I think you just need to make me the host again. Oh, okay. You go to my name and then under the more button. My coast. You have the power. Woo. So. Uh, right on. Great. And he. Perfect. For those who haven't had the chance to yet. Okay. Perfect. A lot of folks, I know the educational system is, there's a lot of work to be done there, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so Christina, you're going into one? I'm going into one. Yes, um, perfect. One, Gabby, two. Wendy, one or two? A two. Two for Wendy, okay. And honey, two. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> Great. See you there. I got sucked in. 
Uh, sorry <laughs> I, was in, uh, I gave you the i gave you the 60 second warning just because i know <laughs> it felt like it went through a black hole <laughs> no no it's good <laughs> I, left, I left poor ray and hang in there um so over to you over to you christina oh, well i hope everyone enjoyed that discussion i know that a lot of us want to spend more time ideating and, and talking about um, what we just all shared. But perhaps for the last 10 minutes, I invite um, a couple of folks who are comfortable with jumping on the mic and perhaps share either um, an idea that came on your discussion, either if it was your own or an idea that stood out to you from someone else. Uh, and then we'll do that for both groups. So perhaps why don't we start with uh, with our group, uh, who would like to jump in and share some thoughts that were discussed. Uh, and just as a friendly reminder for group one, the question was, how might we create a new economic system based on unification of indigenous and modern cultures? So looking at my group, is there somebody comfortable? I think uh, one nice thing that came out at the last second, right before we got sucked back into the room, was uh, the concept of entrepreneurial currency and increased access to business and uh, entrepreneurialism to shift econ the old economy to a new economy with, the, with new people, new mindset. And when Jonathan started the process of saying entrepreneurial currency, that just, uh, I think we all just had a, and then we went, so it kind of was set up nicely, happened nicely. Yeah, that was uh, that was good timing. <laughs> <laughs> Our interest picked peaked. Jonathan, Mary, any thoughts? Yeah, I was honestly going to say the same thing. I thought the the idea of the entrepreneurial currency was really interesting, especially if you tie it back to what Jonathan said at the beginning that you know, cannabis and hemp have been used within indigenous cultures and in North America for, you know, thousands of years as currency and just to tie, sort of tie it back to that, you know, this idea of um, a currency that's, um, a currency that's grounded in something, currency that's grounded in a resource, a renewable resource. I think that's fundamentally extremely powerful compared to um, what we have today, which is essentially this currency that's not backed by anything right now um, and extremely not resilient to economic changes that you know we are seeing today as a result of environmental changes and the COVID crisis and other things going on in our world. And I think that's, that's a really exciting and interesting perspective for sure. Yeah, I just want to, um, with everyone, just think about this for a second. We all live in these major municipalities and we all have, you know, these tiny little areas that we call home. You know, some of us live in condo boxes, apartment boxes. You know, we have these tiny little places and we're all coming together into this one place. And we have to rely on the city of Toronto for the water, for the food, for we have to be reliant on so many things. Now, imagine if we said one day, you can actually grow your own currency. Everyone would leave those major municipalities to go get land, right? And they would grow their own currency. And who would accept the, that currency? Entrepreneurs, the, the new entrepreneurs, right? They would be able to accept that currency. And so those new entrepreneurs can accept your plant currency you know, your, whatever that plant may be, your, your renewable currency that you can grow in your backyard and you can nourish in your backyard. You have your own bank in your backyard. And then you can go out and use that money to buy your, your haircut, your food, your, you know, whatever, whatever you need to buy. And that the entrepreneurs would accept that currency. And that's what I was talking about going sideways on status quo is we're, we're, we're fighting the oppression. You know, we're, we're pushing up on this, this oppression. Um, it's, it's, it's a long and everlasting battle. And how do, you, how do you defeat that? You go sideways on them. You completely jump off their system 
of this crazy pyramid structure, right? That we've been living in where we rely on, on everyone. We rely on the system, the one system, you know, the, the international monetary fund, the, the, the hydro one, you know, one system. We're all tied into this one system, a monopoly, right? It, how, so how do we go sideways on them? We leave the cities, we go back to the land, we start generating our own currency. You know, in, in North America, we used hemp as currency. We paid taxes with hemp. There was no money. It was, here's a bundle of hemp, you know, here's, here's my money, right? And then if we can figure out a way to now use that, green source to you know uh, create a, our own ecosystem our own economy that's that's how i think we go sideways thank you jonathan um yeah and i think the, the one thing that kind of relates to what andrew shared in the chat of how entrepreneurship is about solving a problem ideally from a human centric perspective well, in my opinion, it should be a human-centric perspective. Uh, imagine we created that mindset of creative human and planet-centric problem solving in our young children. And that actually relates to, um, Mark mentioned something about or along the lines of um, teaching spirituality at a young age, as young as age seven, if I'm not mistaken, Mark. Um, and then for me, I shared, and I apologize if I misinterpreted uh, your original thought, Mark, but that resonated with me because for me, I, one of the kind of uh, ideas that I was having, it relates, of course, for those who don't know, but uh, as an educator and I, I teach social entrepreneurship to kids and, and I said, why are we not doing that in our curriculum? In the last year, I spent the time researching curriculums across Canada and our curriculum, business curriculum, hasn't been updated in 11 years. In Ontario alone, we're teaching business from 11 years ago. So why are we not teaching social entrepreneurship? Why are we not teaching our kids creativity and innovation? And that when we're looking at problems, we should be looking at the people and the planet and who are actually affected by it instead of focusing on our solutions. And I'll stop because I get very passionate with this topic. And I guess this is a strong opportunity to switch and, and turn it to our folks that focus on our education system. Uh, so uh, as a reminder, this was the problem statement. How might we create a new education system based on a unification of indigenous and modern cultures? So over to group two. Whoever feels comfortable, please jump in to share some of the ideas that were bounced around. Well, I'm going to just take a moment to, to make sure the four in the other group um, know um, a little more about my friend Hakeem, who's in the room, who's feeling, I could see him feeling uneasy already. Um, which is uh, so Hakeem and his team have built a platform called One Million Teachers, which is an online platform that, that takes a new teacher from entry to certified teacher um, through a black belt sort of model of progression at a price point of $125 US now per teacher. Uh, they have launched it in Africa. Uh, the One Million Teachers, um, brand is is a target that I feel passionately we must reach and the way he's built it is in a way that can be adapted so it's being translated into Arabic and French at this time it can be contextualized for different cultures and it can be added to with modules that teach different approaches to education um, to teachers in any country and they could be shared with teachers from one side of the planet to another. And, and I'm gonna let our group talk about some of the different ways that came out that we could do that. But I think it's really important and I'm so glad Mark has been introduced into this conversation because it sounds like between Mark and Akeem, there's great synergy of, of purpose with technology and with education as well that 
we may have a very leveraged, scalable solution to tr really make very immediate impact on the way teachers are recruited and developed, which there's few things in life that you could imagine in 20 years, you could start seeing like tangible input or sorry, outputs that actually affect the way our, our world works. But I think Hakeem has that and I just, I'm his biggest, one of his biggest cheerleaders, but um, it's important everybody knows the full context of what he's done and, and he, he I'm sure is, is excited to be part of this conversation because every time I bring him into a new one, I push him a little bit out onto his edge of comfort, which brings me great joy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, congratulations, Hakeem. We're excited to all perhaps be part of the journey and help you with going beyond. Will someone else like to jump in and share some of their thoughts? Or what was shared in group two? I can maybe try to, anyone else can help out if you want to, but we got um, on the topic of um, land-based learning, which was really interesting, and we were trying to kind of define it, and I don't know if we were able to come up with a, a final conclusion, um, but kind of more experiential learning and getting out there and learning from what the land can actually teach you and um, kind of breaking down the walls of a classroom. So maybe we could kind of see the walls of a classroom being being that box that, that uh, Jonathan was talking about, and that's, I think, probably most of us have experienced a traditional type of education in a, in a four walls of a classroom. So what could that look like? And maybe that could be somehow connected with um, maybe indigenous um, views of education, of learning from the land, and then the modern views of how do we, like we don't wanna destroy universities and, and, and all types of formal types of education, but how can we kind of make those two um, work together and collide? And I, I think most of the people in the, in the room were expressing, Karen was saying like just getting her students, I think it was Karen, getting her students outside of the classroom. And I see Wendy uh, on a boat. <laughs> I imagine, like I can only imagine how, um, how much her daughter could gain from from spending a year with her family on a boat and being educated in that way, which is which is very different than that that traditional um, form of education. So yeah, um, big big on the environment, and then of course, ha Hakeem killed it in the end. <laughs> I've got to all of our hearts and said like I mean what it comes down to is no matter kind of what the education is the important thing is that um, that a child feels loved um, in whatever environment they're in and if they can get that from their teacher um, and without that love and that connection um, education doesn't 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 work so anything else maybe to add I don't know I tried to sum it up <laughs> beautiful I know I'm not from this group, but now that we're talking about education and I am a student, I feel a little bit obligated to speak because um, I feel like, I don't know, I'm, I think I'm the youngest person in this room. I could be wrong. I'm 19. Is anybody younger than me? No? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, as a current undergrad student, I think I heard a lot of you guys saying, you know, you guys want, you know, youth-led education. You guys want the youth to fight for different education and um you know and our business curriculum is so ridiculously outdated and i just kind of want to update you guys that in mcgill we have um we now have a concentration in uh, sustainable business so people can graduate with a degree in sustainable business and this is one of the first programs of its kind within canada we're extremely proud to be offering it or bcom programs in the world in general we're extremely proud to be offering it and the organization I work with, Digital Health Sustainability Network, which I'm sure um, probably a few of you guys are familiar with. Um, Jonathan, I saw you were connected with both of our co-presidents. Uh, but yeah, so we actually have an academic division and we work with, you know, pushing the faculty to integrate new curriculum. And so far we've been able to convince them to put in a sustainable finance class. So you can now take a three credit, you know, fully, you know, full class in finance on um, sustainable finance finance specifically and uh, we're also pushing for a sustainable accounting class which will hopefully happen as well so um, there is change on the ground and youth are in the very front line of that change and we are actively pushing for it 
So um, I hope that's sort of an uplifting message for you guys. And you guys do know that, you know, good things are happening and we are, you know, fighting alongside you guys. Amazing. Jonathan, Gabby, perhaps I invite you at this time for any closing remarks. Thoughts, comments, feelings? <laughs> Thank you for sparking all this uh, and igniting all these fires dormant for the longest time. I speak for many, many of us. And uh, this is the change. This is the new life. This is the new future. Sparking and immersing my soul in such discussion, such profound and coming back to love coming back to heart, whatever it is that we do, that we are part of in our arena, being directly in education, being directly in the entrepreneurship and whatever. Our heart now is the time that our heart leads again. And uh, with that coherent in our creative, um, miracle creating minds as well and bringing the coherence and living from the heart and showing up for our children, for our husband, for our wives, for everybody. It's, uh, I'm very, very showered by all these blessings and by all this opportunity. And I know this is just the beginning and the work, it's the commitment, the work, it's there for all of us. Thank you so much, Mary, for bringing uh, all of this uh, wisdom. Like I would have not think, not that I, uh, I speak like for a 19 year old, but just so grounded, so empowered. So like the wisdom, like, that regardless of our age, I learn more from my little uh, children that I support, support Mark and I than, than it, every day. They are shaping me. They are like, like talk about solutions, talk about these things. Even just yesterday, Father's Day, they have expressed their souls out for Mark on Father's Day. And, you know, it's just so amazing everything. So the change is here, brothers and sisters. Live from your heart. Live from your heart. Live from your heart. Stop whenever you are facing challenges or whatever atmosphere in our environment go back to the heart forgive yourself forgive everything else we are on this new wave that uh, is amazing 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 this the sparkles that is shining to us and teasing us and it's up to us to be taking and embodying all of that for all of us i look forward to creating a deeper relationship with you all whatever that is shape form Thank you so very much. My profound gratitude and deepest magical love from the Andes of Peru. Thank you so very much, everyone. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Gabby. Absolutely beautiful. It's, uh, it's incredible to, to be connected with all of you. And I know we're going to continue this work going forward. And the, the, I guess the two things that I wanted to pass on is one is to connect with people. You know, uh, take the time every day to connect with people, connect with diverse people, mentor uh, young people. You know, they need us, uh, you know, and if there's any way that we can support them uh, with our knowledge, our wisdoms, our networks, how do we support young people? Because at the end of the day, it's them that are going to have to lead in this, this, this new world. They're going to have to raise their children in this new world. And uh, just know deep down in your heart that uh, we are figuring this thing out and it's coming. It's, it's, it's here now. This is June 22nd, the start of a new cycle. It's been recognized in, in many indigenous cultures that this is the new beginning right now. We're, we're a part of this. And um, it's, it's really exciting. Um, really uh, pleased to be uh, amongst such great champions and um, you know try as hard as we can to uh, really be aware that we are divine spirits that our heart holds memory the emotional memory you know our brain holds that memory with our heart and one day we will be part of mother earth you know so let's make sure we have a nice home to to land in Miigwech. Thank you everyone for joining us yesterday and today.
and for continuing the conversation. I am personally very excited to be part of this community of envisioning what the future will look like. And as Gabby and Jonathan said, this is just the beginning. So stay tuned of how we continue and we move forward. Um, because I truly think that in order for us to move forward, we do need a community. And I think we have the right people here. So um, it's, it's exciting and I don't feel alone, <laughs> which sometimes you can, we can, I'm sure we all feel alone, but um, I, I, have, I have my dog back here. So I'm like, I, I feel like I have my wolf pack. She's, she's, a, she's a husky, so she, everybody thinks she's a wolf, but um, so it's, it feels really great. And uh, please feel free to put uh, your your uh, email uh, on the chat, and perhaps we can all connect. We have your emails, but if you want each other emails, uh, and you can connect with one another on LinkedIn or other social media platforms that you're using, you're comfortable with. Um, but then, um, with Jonathan, Gabby, and Andrew, we'll discuss kind of like what next will be and and we'll let you know how we can proceed with having this community and what actions we can start actually actioning on and uh, specifically on the ideas that we discussed today or new ideas that may come in your sleep or as you're walking down the street or as of you're eating <laughs> your breakfast or whatever the case is um and that's it for me stay safe stay healthy and i look forward to continuing the work Thank you, Christina. Thank you, John. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you all for being here. And uh, we will be uh, we, like, we will be in touch. Thank Take you care. All. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Hakeem. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, everyone. Uh, this has been so good. <laughs> $120 US <laughs> times a million. That's, yes. that's the goal. $120 yes. million. Dollars. Yes. Let's get after it. Yes. And then perhaps there's something for the youth. 1 million youth. There you go. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> 1 million uh, healthcare it's, workers. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a platform we can leverage uh, to customize solutions to to these kids um, in particular. Uh, and I really like the perspective that Jonathan, um, you know, he was talking about um, the future and the youth and all that. So it's something I'm also very passionate about. They then begin to own the space and feel confident that, uh, um, I mean, they're gonna be the one to inherit uh, the world anyway, so. 100%. One million businesses using SEO certification, Jonathan. <laughs> Who the, <laughs> the ideas are flowing. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Take Thank care. Thank you, hi Kim. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, bye, bye Christina. Everyone. Bye, Andrew. Thank you. Yeah. Talk bye, to everyone. Bye everyone. Bye, we'll Karen. see you soon, Karen. Bye, Karen. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. We did it. <laughs> we started we started it. We started it. Do you want to stop recording? Sure. <laughs> <laughs>